Heavy menstrual bleeding is a common but overlooked symptom of underlying bleeding disorders. An accurate and timely diagnosis not only improves symptom management, but also enhances an individual's overall quality of life. To help recognize heavy menstrual bleeding, use the 721 rule as a reference. Seven or more days of menstrual bleeding, or changing a fully saturated pad or tampon every two hours or less, or passing blood clots larger than one inch. Excessive blood loss during periods that interferes with an individual's physical, emotional, social, and material quality of life is also considered as heavy menstrual bleeding. When discussing symptoms, explain that the first day of full flow is considered day one. While bleeding through day seven can be normal, eight days or more of full flow would warrant further investigation. To better understand how much blood loss they are experiencing, it's important to ask if they need to change their pad or tampon every two hours or less because it's soaked with blood or for hygiene reasons. It is also helpful to know what types of products they use, like the brand and size of pads or tampons, period cups or period underwear. When discussing blood clots, explain that clots are globs of thickened blood that can pass during a period and are normal. Clots larger than one inch or the size of a quarter can be a sign of heavy menstrual bleeding. For people who have not been menstruating for more than two years, their bodies are still adjusting to a regular cycle. About 40% of teens may experience heavy menstrual bleeding as their ovulation may not be regular, providing more time for the uterine lining to thicken. Accurately diagnosing heavy menstrual bleeding is key to providing the best treatment. Underlying bleeding disorders are common in individuals with heavy menstrual bleeding. Since most bleeding disorders are inherited, it's imperative to take a detailed history for bleeding symptoms. There are several screening tools to help with the assessment of significant bleeding. Here are some commonly used tools. The Pictorial Blood Assessment Chart, or PBAC, is a menstrual chart and scoring system that patients fill out on their own to track their bleeding patterns. This helps assess how much blood is lost during a period by tracking the number of pads and tampons used, the saturation of the product, and if they experience large clots or instances of flooding. For a generalized bleeding disorder screening tool, the International Society on Thrombosis and Hemostasis developed a bleeding assessment tool called the ISTH BAT. It should be administered by a healthcare professional and takes about 20 minutes to complete. Another option is the Claire Phillips screening tool. This tool asks eight questions, which help determine if further evaluation and testing may be needed for an underlying bleeding disorder. For those who meet the abnormal bleeding criterion, a laboratory evaluation should be the next step. For individuals who prefer to complete a screening on their own, there is an online tool called the Self-Bleeding Assessment Tool, or SELF-BAT. The SELF-BAT, developed by Dr. Paula James, is a tool for individuals who are concerned about bleeding. It helps users determine whether their current or past bleeding episodes may be considered normal or abnormal. The results are then shared with a healthcare provider for further review and evaluation. If someone shows signs of a possible bleeding disorder, they should be referred to a hematologist or to a hemophilia treatment center for further evaluation. A comprehensive workup includes a detailed health history, physical exam, and laboratory tests. With the correct tools and education, healthcare providers can make a timely diagnosis and offer effective management options for heavy menstrual bleeding. There are both hormonal and non-hormonal treatments available. A personalized care plan guided by the individual's needs and goals can significantly improve their quality of life. For more information and education on women and girls with blood disorders, visit the Foundation for Women and Girls with Blood Disorders at www.fwgbd.org.